Oh yeah, Antlers. When I saw this movie was coming up, I'd actually forgotten I saw a trailer for it like two years ago. <laughs> but anyway, it's finally out this weekend. Antlers is a Wendigo horror film from director Scott Cooper and producer Guillermo del Toro and is about a kid whose father and brother are transforming into the mythical beast and he has to keep them locked in the attic while still attending school and bringing them things to eat. I love just how bleak this movie is. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's a Scott Cooper movie. This feels like it could be taking place simultaneous to the events of Out of the Furnace. Not only is it always foggy, rainy, and overcast, but we get in deep to just how depressing these people's lives are. It isn't enough that Lucas nearly has no family left, but he's bullied, lives in a shithole meth house, has to clean up crime scenes, dispose of bodies, while still trying to maintain some kind of normalcy at school. His teacher, Carrie Russell, begins suspecting something is up with him, and even she has a lot of darkness in her past, along with her brother, Jesse Plemons, which ties into the main plot and how she can see the signs of just how bad this kid's home life is. There's these very dramatic, intense scenes with her and Plemons that are shot like you're watching a family melodrama like ordinary people. I really dig that about the movie. When mutilated bodies keep turning up in the woods of this Oregon town, it starts playing like a dark procedural as well. As if you're watching something Taylor Sheridan would have wrote. This could have been just a throwaway monster movie, but you can tell the writers and filmmakers really care about these characters and aren't afraid to show just how sad their situation is. It gives it all a sense of realism that you can relate to. Even some of the practical effects they use really stand out and are quite effective. Now, it's not a perfect movie by any means, though I do really like how the teacher is a smart character in this film who knows when not to go into a creepy house and to not just leave something laying there when it may not be dead. But there's other characters who do some dumb shit. There's one who makes this boneheaded decision to go inspecting through an obvious murder house and go into locked rooms and nose around when it seems like this character should be smart enough not to do this. It's one of those deals where a character has to do something dumb to move the plot forward. And yeah, there's some stock horror movie bullies in the movie, but admittedly the payoff on that is pretty good. Also, you can tell when the movie wants certain characters to live or die. Some will get chewed up like a garbage disposal, but if the movie wants you to live, eh, it'll just push you aside and knock you out. All that said, I really enjoyed watching this movie. It's a real adult horror film where the characters, the tone, the mood, all give some serious gravity to the situation. And it's certainly not afraid to leave you depressed when you're watching it. I'll give the movie a really solid B+. There's one particular jump scare that really got me. And it's nice seeing this horror film where you're caught up in the monster plot line and also just the drama of this town and these people's lives. And the community voters easily predicted this one, but I was curious about what kind of funny answers I would get by asking grade predictions for antlers. And that didn't disappoint. I particularly like pointy. <laughs> and busts out the measuring tape. It's only a measly two-pointer, not worth keeping as a trophy. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Stay tuned this weekend for my review of Last Night in Soho, and we'll see you next time.